After visiting our resort town, England's natural beauty provides a delightful contrast. These chalk cliffs are often mistaken for Dover's, but they're the white cliffs of Beachy Head. Same chalk, same coastline, but further west. Beachy Head is carpeted by a vast grassy field, wild yet smooth as a putting green, reaching up to a dramatic drop-off. With the open sea beyond and white chalk cliffs plummeting 500 feet into the surf, this scene thrills hikers. From here, a long undulating series of cliffs stretches for miles. Long ago, these were dubbed the Seven Sisters by groggy sailors at sea who gazed lustily through the mist from their ships and imagined a can-can of seven maidens lifting their lacy petticoats. While this chalk may have looked like lace, from a distance, in the fog, in a drunken stupor, it's actually the shelly sediment of the seabed, solidified over 100 million years and then raised high by the slow motion collision of continents. The handy hamlet of Burling Gap has an inviting visitor center. Its stairway provides the only convenient access to the beach. Early birds get the sandy spots among the pebbles, and the tide pools are a hit with the kids. Beachy Head is just one stretch of the South Downs Way, one of many beloved public walks that crisscross Britain. The English love to ramble and enjoy historic points along the way. Around here, as this mysterious horse illustrates, art has been carved into the underlying chalk of the hillsides for generations. Towering figures, like the Long Man of Wilmington, go back many centuries. The countryside feels made to order for easy walks. A delightful stop is the hamlet of East Dean, which still gathers around its medieval green. When hiking in England, it seems you're never far from a friendly pub. By the way, we're here in August. I like England in peak season. Long days, best weather, and there are enough people out for things to be lively, but never really a crowd problem. <laughs> 